Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Tongveo 1080p PTZ, that's Pan Tilt Zoom, streaming camera with AI tracking. So this is provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So we have some features listed here. It says optical zoom. So this has a 20x optical zoom, 1080p, 60fps, AI tracking, AI framing, multi-interface, Sony sensor, universal compatibility. We have some more specs in the back here. You can pause and read through these, but I'll point out a couple. So this does H.264, H.265, and Motion JPEG. Interfaces include USB 3.0, HDMI, RJ45, SDI. So the USB interface supports UVC. So that's the standard for webcams. So let's get this open. Here we have the manual. Let's take a quick look at it. So this shows the different ports. We have line in, line out. RS-485, RS-232 in, RS-232 out, 12 volts DC, on-off power switch, USB 3.0, SDI, HDMI, and LAN. This also supports power over Ethernet. And here's a longer list of specs. So you can pause and read through that. So this has a web UI. Here we have the packing list. It comes with remote control. So that's most of that there. So the accessories are going to be on the sides here. Let's pull those out. And the camera's in the middle. There's a piece of foam down here. Let's pull that out. So it looks like we have anchors here. Here we have the power supply. Output is 12 volts at 2 amps. And this has a standard cable. And there's a barrel jack on this end. Below that we have a mounting bracket. So if you want to mount that on a wall, you can use the bracket. The other box, we have a remote control. It takes AAA batteries, so I'll put those in. And this just kind of pries from the side. It has that little notch there. And it comes with a USB cable. So this does not come with a lot of cables. There's so many interfaces on here that it wouldn't make sense to include all of the cables. So let's look at the camera. So this has some heft to it. it has a cover for the lens, it's rubber. We have a little window here with some indicators on it. The IR would probably go in there too. I think there's the IR receiver. So under my hand here is a quarter 20 thread. It also has the IP address with the credentials and there's rubber feet. Here we have the inputs and a couple outputs on the back. So we have the line in out, ethernet, HDMI, SDI, USB, on off switch, the RS-232, the RS-485, and system select. I think that's for the ID. So let me get this connected up. So I'm going to plug this in. I'll let that boot. I'm going to take the cover off too. We'll need to turn the switch on. To start out, I'm just going to hook up HDMI. And when this is running, it looks like it's drawing about 10 watts. And I have this little portable monitor. So here we can see the camera. Now I will show other ways to hook this up, but a small monitor like this could be used for a preview for a camera like this. But we have the basic controls on the remote. We can go to the right. We can go to the left. We can go up. We can go down. And we can zoom in. So there's a slow zoom and a fast zoom. We also have focus modes, so I can do near and far. Now it has AI modes, but I'll get into that in a little bit. But we can go to menu, and we're going to have a menu here. Let's see if I can get that up easily. Here we can change things like exposure, color, image, display, and the other settings on here. So let's go to display. So we can do things like flip the screen. Let's do that. You can see that's flipped. Now you notice the menu is not flipping just the camera. Now this does have a feature where if you turn it upside down, it will automatically know that and flip the image. But if you want to do it manually, you can do it here. We also have communication set up. So this will show the IP address and such. So I'll exit here. And this is not a 1080p monitor, but you can see it does look very sharp on this monitor. So we know the camera's working with the remote. 
and you can do a lot with this remote. Now the reason I'm using this monitor is because it is easy to show the camera and the monitor at the same time, as opposed to using my bigger monitor, which is up a little bit higher. Let me demonstrate a couple of the features on here, like presets. So here we have a number keypad that says preset and reset. So let's hit preset one, and let's go to another position, and we'll go preset two. Now let's just hit one, and you can see it goes back to one. We'll hit two, it goes back to two. Now let's zoom in here. So we have that zoomed in, let's say preset two. Let's go to one, and let's go back to two. So you can see the preset works for pan, tilt, and zoom. If we hit manual focus, and I say, I'll just make it out of focus. Okay, so that's blurry. And I'll say preset two. I'll go back to one, and then we'll go to two. Let me hit auto here. So we auto focus, then I'll hit two again. So it looks like the preset does take into account focus. So that's really nice. If you have a custom focus on here, it will store that. So the way this could be used, if you have a church or a conference room. So the way this could be used, you could set presets for key points. So if you're in a church, you might have different lecterns or you might have a choir. So you could say one is the main lectern, two could be the choir, three could be some other area of the church. And you could hit these to switch back and forth very quickly. Now, if you had this in a conference room or a city hall, you could have people assigned to these. So if you have six people, you could have one through six and you could hit one, it could go to the first person, two could go to the second and so on. So it can be a little bit tedious to move this manually to exactly where you want it, but the presets make it very, very fast. Now, if you have multiple cameras, you can even set different cameras here so you can control them all with one remote. Let's hit PTZ reset. So this is going to take it to kind of a home position. So that's a quick overview of using this with HDMI and a remote. Next, I'm going to connect this up to a network. Okay, so I have a different setup here. I've disconnected the power supply and I've plugged in an ethernet cable. This is connected to a power over ethernet switch. You could also plug this into what's called a PoE injector. And that's a device that adds power to a network cable. So I do have the monitor still hooked up here, but you can imagine if I didn't have the monitor hooked up, I would just have this single cable going to the camera. So if I wanted to mount this somewhere, I wouldn't have to have a bulky power supply hanging off of it. So I'm going to go into the interface here with the remote and I'll go to menu and I'll go down to communication setup. And I want to go down here to DHCP. Now it has an IP address, but I want to put it on my network. So the little arrow, it's kind of hard to see, there's a little arrow there. I'm going to go to the right. It says start get IP. And now it has an IP address on my network. So now I can go to a computer and I can access this with that IP address. Okay, so we got that IP address from the interface on the camera itself. And if we go to a web browser, we can enter that in. It had a login screen, so I entered the credentials that were on the bottom of the camera. And we start out on this home screen and you can see we have the pan, tilt, zoom settings over here. Looks like we can also go to the on-screen display and we can click on these to go back and forth. I don't know if there's hotkeys for this. So I can control it just like I did on the remote. We can zoom in, we can zoom out. We can set presets here. So we have the preset one and two. So when we set those up on the remote, it actually stored it on the camera. Down below, we have the focus mode. So there are going to be certain things that might be faster to do on the camera and other things that might be faster to do on the remote. So then if we go to image, we can change some image settings. So here you have white balance. We can change exposure, things like that. Looks like there's some presets over here also. Now we can go to tracking. So this is going to have your AI tracking. Now I'm going to demonstrate the AI tracking. I need to move it to a place where I can move around a little more. But here you can turn it on or off. It says mode is presenter zone or auto frame. This humanoid frame, debug or off or default. This is tracking hint, on or off. At the bottom here, we have auto zoom, auto tilt, figure size, tracking start, and we have zone. So we'll go back to the left side, we have audio video. So here you can change all sorts of things. We can change our encoding from 264 to 265 or motion JPEG. We can change the resolution, bit rate. Now there's two streams here. Looks like the second stream is limited to 720p. So if you've ever used a security camera, you might be familiar with an interface like this. It will often have primary and secondary streams. 
oftentimes this is used so you can have the primary stream for local use and the secondary stream could go out to the internet. Then we have audio settings. Now this does not have a microphone built into it, but it does have audio in, so you could plug a microphone into it. Now if you're using this with something like OBS, you might just hook your microphone right into OBS. And you can see the line in here is set to line in. Next we have network. So we just set this up for DHCP on the camera itself. Now these are the basic LAN settings. Now if you look on the top here, these are settings for other things. There are streaming protocols. NTP would be for the clock. I'm not sure what GB28181 is, but you can configure that all here. So below that on the left, we have NDI settings. Below that we have captions. And then we have system. So I'm going to get this set up with OBS and I'll come back and talk about how I did that. Okay, so to connect this up to OBS, you want to go to network on the left here and then go to RTSP settings. Now you can turn the auth on if you want. I'm going to go to mainstream here. I'll select it and I'll copy it. Now I'll go into OBS. So under sources, I'm going to go to plus, then media source. I'll create new, I'll say okay. I want to uncheck local file. And then in input, I'll paste in the URL and hit okay. And here we have the video streaming from the camera. So from this point, you could record this, you could stream it, or do whatever else you like with it. Next, I'll get this set up so we can check out the AI capabilities. Okay, so here I have the camera set up. In the middle, we have the AI button. And when we press that, that will turn on frame track. And if we press to the left, we'll have presenter track. So I'll first do the middle button, and I'll walk around and you can see that the camera will track me. So there's a quick demonstration of tracking. You can see that tracked me around. Now, if you want more finite controls over that, the best way to get to those would be through the web interface. You could tell it how much of a person's body is showing up. So you could have, say, half height, full height, things like that. While we have this set up, I've programmed in some presets. So I'll go through those so we can see how fast these operate. So we have this table here. I'll press preset four. We'll zoom in on the whole table. Then I'll press one. And we'll go to the soda bottle. Go to two. That's a little Lego build, and then three is another Lego build. Let's go back to one. So you can see when the positions are close to each other, it changes very quickly. Now let's go back to four, which is the whole table. So that's a little bit slower, but not bad. But when you go between say one and two, it's pretty fast. So you just watched the video I recorded on my MacBook. I recorded that with QuickTime. So to connect this up to my Mac, I used the included USB cable. So I plugged one end in here. Since I have a MacBook with USB-C, I use this little USB-C hub. With the end, you could just use an adapter. And then I plug this into my laptop. Since this uses the standard USB webcam protocol, you could plug this into PCs, Macs, or if you have other devices that work with webcams, maybe gaming systems, or maybe you have a TV that allows you to hook in a webcam. I'm guessing this would be compatible with those things too. So if we look at the side here, it says NDI, and that stands for Network Device Interface. So there's a website, NDI Video, and it has NDI tools, so you can download these to your computer and you can interact with your camera. So here we have the NDI Video Monitor, so it's streaming the video over the network to this computer. So to connect up to this, I just opened up the NDI Video Monitor, and then I went to Settings, PTZ Control, came up twice, but we have controls here so I can control the camera. Now, I don't know that this is the best way to control the camera, but it is another option amongst the many other options. So that was the Tongveo 1080p pan tilt zoom camera with AI tracking. This camera is just chocked full of features. It can output to so many different formats. You have network, USB, HDMI, SDI. 
There's many ways to control this with the remote, with a computer. You can also get dedicated controllers. A camera like this would be great for a church, conference room, could be great for televised meetings. This could work well in a podcast studio. I like how easy this was to use and I like how capable it was just using even the remote. So you don't have to have a lot of equipment to use this. At a minimum, you can plug this into your computer just like you would a webcam. And then it only goes up from there and the different things you can do with it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.